he literally realized that he is God. He was literally completely impersonal with me. I was impersonal at that point. Uh, I was aware of being aware and he was impersonal with me and it was just, just beautiful, very beautiful. There's nothing what is blocking, blocking the awareness from being. It's already here. It's already ever present. The awareness is already aware. There's no, there's no blockage. That, that's just a thought that you believe, but there's an awareness of it. That is the key. The awareness is the key, not whatever you think is the key. They, they don't realize how significant uh, this awareness is. Hey everyone, welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Atlas. Very pumped for this episode. We're gonna be talking about the pathless path to God realization. We have Sebastian Key joining us on the show. Hi, Sebastian. Hello everyone, hello. <laughs> I'm so happy that you stumbled upon us and then messaged in the comments and then we got connected really quickly. It's a divine dream. It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sebastian is so unique. And I'll give you a bit of his bio. You can find it also written below. He's a teacher of the timeless pathless path to God realization. He is unique as he came to the realization when he was 19 years old. We're going to be talking about that story. He is the founder of I Am Eternal Life, and he's currently accepting one-on-one -on -one private sessions. You can follow slash support him via the links below. His Instagram is really popping. We have a lot of the same teachers. It's really cool stuff there. Go check it out. Website, blog, Patreon as well. Really good writings on his blog. And support our man here so you can continue with thank great you, prosperity. Thank you, thank you everyone. Sebastian, let's do this. Okay, so were you were you also born and raised in Israel? Yes, I was in Israel until just a few months ago. Uh, there was a point where, uh, well, we can probably discuss this a bit later, but yes, I was born and raised in Israel. Yes. And then, who were your parents? How many siblings did you have? So I had I have one older brother, one younger brother. The older brother is 22. The younger brother is uh, 14 in a month. And two parents, like mother, father, which are 44 around that area right now. So they're pretty young. Uh, that would be it for now. And what were their professions? Um, so my dad was working with, is working with computers, stuff like that. And my mom is a photographer. Interesting. And are their lineages both Israeli? No, they're from, my mother is from uh, Armenia and my dad is from Georgia, but they both met in Georgia. But like their lineage <laughs> is what I described. So you said your mom's Armenian? Yes. And your dad's Georgian? Yes, yes. <laughs> But they are both mixed also because like my mom, my, my mom's mom is, um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure which one of them is Armenian, which one of them is Georgian. So, but they're both like very close, but my father is mainly Georgian. My mother is like half, half, probably something like that. But my, my, my uh, father's uh, father is uh, Jewish also. That is why we were able to come to Israel. Yeah, okay, I see, I see. This is the first time that Sebastian and I are discovering that we actually share lineage as well because both my mom and my dad are Armenian. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, you remember, yeah. What did you, what did you say, just say? Yes, yes, you remember, <laughs> I love you. Sorry, sorry. Yes, kiss you, mem. I love you. Oh, oh, I have no idea. I don't speak Armenian, but I love you too. Vigavaitsi <laughs> You speak Russian? Yeah, I speak Russian. Ah, This is what we just learned that we both speak Russian. What? 
<laughs> what? Oh, that's so interesting. So did they both speak Russian? Also, they taught you all your siblings Russian growing up? Yes, we were like, they pretty much knew only Russian. Uh, I learned um, Hebrew through school, basically. And only later, only my father was uh, learning Hebrew, kind of like, not uh, uh, completely, not fluently, but enough to make business and stuff. But so, yeah, we were raised in Russian. Oh, wow. Raised in Russian and then picked up English as a second language and then Hebrew as third. Is yeah, that through about the, right? Through the, um, well, it was Russian, then Hebrew, then English, because uh, through the um, television, there were many series that were talking in, in English, but the subtitles were in Hebrew. So I was able to understand what they are saying based on what is translated. And then I was somehow the, yes. uh, the brain was able to just learn English through that. And also through uh, playing video games like Maple Story. So I needed to ask for uh, money and needed, for, uh, needed to ask for help and stuff like that. So I also was talking to people through Maple Story and uh, games like that. So. Uh, that was also a very great help to um, learn English. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is, we just got this fascinating similarity that just came up. It's so interesting. We didn't even know this about one another. That's so interesting. My grandma taught me Russian when I was growing up and I'm so so grateful being being bilingual and I learned and a lot of Spanish also in high school and so being multilingual is really important it sort of provides additional perspectives and, and you can help people God realize in many languages in many languages <laughs> yeah yeah exactly I've actually been practicing that specific <laughs> thing um <clears throat> And there's also a lot of neuroscientific benefits as well with gray matter as we're sort of progressing into that on a scientific side of things. Sebastian, my next question for you is about who were you growing up? When did you kind of pick up your interests even what were your interests before you got interested in spirituality and stuff like that? And then how did you get interested in spirituality? Okay. So, so uh, before spirituality, um, I was basically interested in video games, mostly video games. And at like 12 or 13, I picked up anime from my older brother. So that was pretty much uh, it. Um, I was skipping school a lot. I hated school. Like I literally skipped like 100 days out of 200, basically. Um, wow. <laughs> so I was very, very uh, socially anxious uh, starting from around age 13 because I had a lot of friends. Oh, I also was uh, basically a thief. <laughs> I was stealing phones and stealing a lot of stuff from people because we were poor and I always wanted stuff because, well, I wasn't God realized. <laughs> so I was stealing stuff and still I, I kind of had friends and stuff like that. So uh, I definitely loved spending time with my friends, listening to music and Linkin Park, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> Um, so, um, so yeah, that was a, a nice period in my life until like 13 and from 13, uh, I basically, well, actually uh, before that at 11, I was bullied a lot, uh, because I was very short and Georgian and there is a show in Israel that basically portrays a Georgian short person on TV and he's super stupid also. So they called me you, you short midget uh, Georgian stuff like that. So uh, yeah, that was uh, horrible at the time right now I wouldn't even care. But yeah. um, so I was bullied for that. Um, 
But after that, I made friends with these bullies and everyone in class, basically. Um, mm -hmm. But at, at the moment when I went from, um, so from like the starting school, middle school and high school, right? How elementary school. So from elementary school at the last year, I basically uh, broke contact with everyone I knew. I just like uh, in retrospect, it was like a calling from God basically because there would be no other reason basically. And um, mm -hmm. so I basically just uh, left everyone. They, they, they did not suit my taste. Basically, I, I, I like there was an intuition that they were fake and I did not want to be with them. Wow. And um, so after that, I basically I still had friends, a very small group of friends. But uh, at some point um, I became identified with being socially anxious, depressed. Uh, stuff like this and at like um, 16 or so it was peaking I really wanted to kill myself I was browsing some forums and sites that were also not very helpful for that they were only um, um, making me more identified and stuff like that that was not the ideal environment to spend my time in but re in retrospect it was it was the ideal environment because um, um that pushed me to to suicide and because i was pushed to suicide and i i literally could not bear the pain anymore of being identified with being socially anxious and depressed and stuff like that um, um it was like i had a choice it was either i'm going to uh, kill myself or i'm going to have a mystical experience using psychedelics so uh, i took the psychedelics with my friend and he had a very bad trip, but I actually had a very enlightening trip. I was in the in in the middle of the trip. I basically what did you uh, take? <clears throat> what did you take? LSD. I took one hundred fifty uh, micrograms, micrograms of yep. LSD on a sugar cube. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I basically, after a few hours, I was in this place near a lake. And I was looking around and the trees were alive. And I, I never had this kind of uh, thing before because you know, yep. so much identified with thoughts that you don't even see the aliveness that is uh, all there is really, but you, don't see it. you are too identified with all these concepts. So uh, that was very amazing. And uh, definitely I felt a calling to continue using psychedelics because I felt like they could bring me even more realization, more aliveness. Uh, be, like that was, um, I just knew I had to, to continue using, uh, using them and utilizing them to have the best life. Because even the moment, even a few hours after the first trip, I basically my social anxiety vanished. It literally vanished. I, I went to the mall wow. and my friend was more anxious than me and he's not even socially anxious. Uh, he was worried and stuff and I'm like just going through the, the, the security guard and I'm, I'm pretty much I'm tripping, right? <laughs> kind of, <laughs> at least like it was like eight hours um, into the trip. So not really, really tripping, but still basically under the effect. Uh, so some kind of ego dissolution uh, yeah. definitely happened with no doubt. Uh, and that uh, basically helped the social anxiety to vanish. And I felt uh, great for the few days after. Okay, so I took 200 micrograms of LSD uh, three days later after my four first dose. And then we went with my friends to a restaurant and I, I looked at the restaurant and it felt like this was some kind of restaurant for animals, right? Because on LSD, the, the ego is so dissolved. They're so... It's, it's not human beings anymore. It's, you literally see that it's an animal in front of you, basically. So, um, so I, was, I was just watching them eating meat because they were eating, eating like chicken wings. And it was just the most insane scene uh, ever. It was just insane. And then we went outside and I, I was just looking at, at like, I was just walking and it felt like the sun. I never saw the sun in the sky and it felt like, I don't know how to describe the 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 perception, but uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever. There's nothing here uh, that I can really um, uh, yeah. share uh, too much. Um, so uh, after that, I continued using uh, LSD like maybe one once in two weeks or so. 
um, at some point, actually a few, probably a week after the second dose, I took LSD again, 100, 150 micrograms. And uh, I actually had like a realization that like this whole world is for me to explore. Like there was literally, that was probably the first one, the first time I, I realized like intuitively, right? I did not yet have the concept that I am consciousness, but it was like, I'm totally free from the past. Basically, I really, really, there was a, a, an actual realization that like there's, there's freedom and there, there's so much to explore. Um, uh, I cannot really talk too much um, um, about um, the next trips because I, I really don't remember too much. But at some point, I also had a trip in which um, I realized Brahman, basically. I was looking at the mirror and there was just, at the time, I had no idea what the hell was happening, right? But there was just ego death, basically. Um, uh, with that memory, um, it really, like, it's a very, very strong uh, memory uh, that... Uh, pushed me towards God realization because it was this this picture of me looking at the mirror, but there was no person. It was just pure existence. So uh, that was very very powerful. Um, um. Wow. <sighs> That, that's probably what I'm going to share for now. Wait, uh, what was the question again, by the way? What exactly was the question? How I got into spirituality. Let's continue to, to this. So at one point, I took another dose of LSD. Wait, 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 I'll hit the ball back and then we'll keep, <laughs> we'll keep going. Wow. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Wow. So <clears throat> well, this is there's a lot of similarities here. Besides our lineages, our shared language, I also played a ridiculous amount of video games growing up. I also listened to things like Linkin Park. I also stole a bunch of shit growing up. <laughs> I was also bullied called Jelly Belly because I was fatter. <laughs> I also broke contact with a lot of people to explore more of the world. Now, I didn't have as severe of what sounds like depression and social anxiety like you yeah, it did. was at the level that basically i could not go to the store i was afraid to go to school because if i was late in one minute there was always this one person who says oh you are late you are late and i could not bear that so basically even when i went to the store and someone talked to me or anywhere someone talked to me um uh, i would i would blush very hard and they they would comment on that and then i would start also like that, 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 that you know like uh yeah mumbling on your words yeah and that exacerbated the anxiety even further so yeah it, it's it was and like it was absolutely insane i was i was totally uh, believing the thought that says i'm unlovable unworthy and at the time i, I was really identified with the desire to have a girlfriend and because of the social anxiety that basically denied that, blocked it, the, even the possibility, it, it got me even further into depression and stuff like this just kept building up uh, uh, one at, uh, on top of the other. <laughs> so much trauma pressure cooking the piercing of the veilless veil it was and perfect it was <laughs> yeah it was perfect yeah and what <clears throat> wow it's 
crazy seeing you in the state that you're in right now, just four years later after being so depressed and social anxiety that you wanted to commit suicide. And it's so fascinating seeing that because I, it's so insane for me to imagine you in that previous state. That's a, you know, that's a completely different reality. <laughs> it's so, so crazy. So also what else was interesting was that there's a lot of the planet is currently waking up again to entheogens slash psychedelics and their ability to awaken us to ultimate reality and in many ways they have been for thousands of years by indigenous cultures around the world and then in the especially 1960s and the counterculture it was very quickly seen that the denuclearization of the family and too much openness too much liberalism too much awakening happening too quickly that needed to be choked down and so the complete illegalization of everything and that's spreading around the planet and so it's really good that you ended up finding LSD. And this is currently being done by MAPS, the Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Studies. We've had Rick Doblin on the show several times. We adore what they're doing across all of the different entheogens and showing the, the breakthrough properties of them to this God realization. And they're in, they got breakthrough therapy awarded by the FDA and I all totally this stuff. support everything. All all the all the research done on uh, substances like MDMA and all the other entheogens also definitely that can help and heal uh, so much definitely and awaken of course. Yeah, exactly. Psilocybin as well, five MeO DMT, ayahuasca, peyote there's many more and even cannabinoids and it's really interesting that you were at such a time that basically required you to have something like a breakthrough because you were so identified with your thoughts and you were missing the aliveness and LSD did the same, same thing for me in my really early 20s, where I also saw the aliveness of the trees and the planet at that level. And that was so profoundly shifting for me as well. So my question would be, where did you hear about LSD? And how was the process? It sounds like it ended up being quite easy for you to procure because you were doing it once every two weeks. Or procure? So. You mean purchase? To, yeah, it's like to get it from someone. Yeah, yeah. I see. So, um, I repeat the question, please. How did you hear about LSD potentially? Oh, so how did I something? hear about LSD and how did I get it? Okay, mm -hmm. so I heard about LSD because I was looking for medicine for the social anxiety. So the first things I noticed or read about were Xanax and SSRIs, but wow. I was willing even to take Xanax every day for the rest of my life. I was so desperate. So SSRIs, I read that they only had like 40 to 55% uh, success rate. So I was like, no, this shit ain't gonna work basically. So I was not willing to take SSRIs, uh, but um, Xanax was, I don't know, somehow uh, uh, this dream did not allow it basically <laughs> so um yeah i continue continued reading about um mystical experiences somehow i i was i stumbled upon them 
and I was reading about shrooms and LSD and somehow I, I was smoking weed at the time, right? And uh, you can purchase weed through Telegram very easily. In Israel, you can get all kinds of drugs super easily through the Telegram. So um, I could just uh, purchase um, some LSD through the Telegram and go to the other city, take the LSD and go back to my city and use it. So it was super simple. And until the, the day I left, I could take like, I could, could get like DMT, Changa, 2CB, um, uh, weed, of course, LSD, shrooms, uh, what, what MDMA, of course, uh, whatever, like whatever I could easily and readily get everything I needed. Wow. You were so pressure cooked by the suffering that you were researching Xanax and SSRIs and so many of the perverse incentives that exist because they are subscriptions for life. And you're like, no, 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 can no, you, no, can no. You please tell me what exactly it means, perverse. Yeah, the perverse incentive is like an incentive that is not aligned with the two parties. It's aligned mostly in favor of just one party to extract from the other party. What, what exactly is the point you are trying to make so I can understand? That with Xanax and with SSRIs, they are basically more like extracting from one, from the victim to the company, because otherwise, if we were smart, we would say, instead of Xanax and SSRI, let's give the person an entheogen and they can, like you were researching, they can break through more efficiently. So basically, they want you to make, to make you a slave zombie for life, basically. That's they, not ideal for the society, but it is ideal for the companies that are making money. Is this what you're saying? Yeah, it's it's yeah, that's it's worded aggressively. <laughs> yeah, the the slave the... slave zombie for life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But really though, um, so th that's what we call perverse incentives, is things like that. I see. Yeah. Wow. And so I'm so happy that you could just get on Telegram and, and get some and okay, cool. So that's how that happened. And then I'm really happy that you had that trees becoming alive uh, for you. And it's a really interesting story that you tell about being so caught up in thoughts. And then also that you weren't able to see that. And me too, I was also like that. And then in the early 20s, I saw that and I was like blown away by that. And then it was interesting, your story about when the, when that default mode network in neuroscience, when there's that, the mental models and concepts that we have about the world when they are so aggressively tight on our worldview that it makes it so that we can't even see how silly it looks to see humans sitting there eating chicken wings and they're human they're human animals and to, but you saw that because you had that loosened your worldview and that tightness was loosened through the entheogens and you were able to see that. And those were some profound revelations for me as well. Another massive similarity. And so I like the, what you said about the whole world is free. You're free to explore the whole world, how that revelation came in. It was sort of some of the initial uh, becoming more interested in what that freedom or what that consciousness is. And then it sounds like several trips later, maybe like was a six or like 12 trips later that you were looking at the oh, mirror. Uh, oh, uh, probably like around six, six trips or so. Okay. So six trips. So now let's start here and then we'll keep going on the spirituality. So, okay, so I said <clears throat> what I said, sorry. Yeah. Continue. So specifically this question is before we keep going on spirituality is take us to what happened when, you were looking at the mirror. And was this also on uh, LSD or it was? Okay, so this was like the seventh trip or something like that. Let's say, yeah, I really yeah. don't remember the but number. Something like that, yeah, exactly, yeah. cool. Okay, so, so what happened? Well, what nothing happened. <laughs> that was the first time nothing happened, 
right? Because always something is happening. Oh, this is happening. This is happening. But there was just pure awareness, basically. There was no actual realization that this is pure awareness. But in retrospect, I could look at that and uh, see what actually happened there, right? With the later um, um, intellectual understanding uh, that I built on top of uh, all of this ego dissolution uh, happenings. So after that, um, I also had another trip, a few trips later, probably, I really don't remember exactly. Wait, wait, I, I, wanna, I want you to unpack the moment. If you remember it any more detail, I would love for you to unpack sort of the, when you're, you're Sebastian Key and you're looking at yourself in the mirror and then within a couple of moments, you kind of recognize the awareness itself and so, not exactly. Okay, okay. It, yeah, it yeah. was not that I recognized the awareness. It was like the ego dissolved. So I did not even recognize the awareness. At the time, there was just bliss, pure freedom. That okay. was what was happening. And I don't have too much memories from that day itself. Okay, got uh, it. I, I do remember I want to share that there was one day where I took the LSD and I was listening to music outside on the, on the, on the uh, rooftop, basically. And I was listening to music and, and man, I was going crazy. I was going crazy. I was listening to, to trance music and I was super shy. I could not even dance with myself. Like I, I did not have the, like there was too much ego identification. So you could not, I could not even let loose with my own self. Right. So uh, yeah, I took the LSD and I started dancing and it was super free, super fun, super blissful. Um, Possibly it was this day that this happened. Um, uh, one day I was also, uh, like I'm just sharing right now some uh, LSD experiences. I was looking at the sky and like, there was just so much bliss, just insane, insane bliss because you are so present uh, with no ego, right? <laughs> so at the time you are identified with the ego. So the bliss looks insanely, insanely strong. Right now there is bliss but it's like, it's like it, the bliss is normal at this point. It's like you are stabilized uh, in the bliss as the bliss. So uh, it would not be so amazing, right? But at the first time when you are still identified and you realize there is bliss, then it's amazing. Uh, so I wanted to share that. And a few trips later, I took another uh, LSD. I'm not sure how much it was. Um, and I pretty much realized that I'm eternal. Like it was again. It, it none of it is intellectual at all at that point. It was I was just sitting uh, on my chair. Uh, my mom was in the in the other uh, couch, and I was just like I was pure awareness basically. There was absolutely no ego. That was like probably the most. Um, uh, that was the the strongest you could say uh, ego death that I ever had. It, it was like. Like I was literally God at that point. Um, yeah. So I was, I was literally looking just at a pure, um, like just my, my apartment, right? And it was eternal. It was literally eternity. It was realized that this is eternity. Literally, this is eternity. There was also an intuitive recognition that there is the conditioned mind. I still have no intellectual understanding of anything happening even at this point but there was an intuitive realization that there is an egoic mind and I need to fight for my spot as pure awareness. Um, um, uh -huh. So it's like you become a, a, like an intuitive uh, realization of being a spiritual warrior. That that's what it was basically. Um, yeah, this is what I wanted to share. And this is um, for, for now, if you have any comments, uh, I can continue to, um, yeah, well, I can continue, see, see if you have any comments. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> My primary comment here is that I love how, in a sense, LSD and entheogens in many ways, they dissolve that contracted energy of the separate egoic entity. And then they 
enable the God realization in many ways. It's in a sense, it was like training wheels. It sounds like for you, it was kind of like training wheels into bliss, seeing bliss, feeling bliss, etc. It was like training wheels. And then eventually you stabilized without LSD in a sense. And that became the God realization. That's sort of how the yeah, I'm not finished with the with the story, yeah. so I would like I, to expand I, on that. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Okay, yeah. And I love how you recognize that even the moment of being in your apartment, you just recognized eternity as well. It's Literally, not just a, that it was clear yeah, as clear. As, yeah, 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 yeah. I even and started that's profound, by posting yeah. in the Instagram. Like, listen, guys, we are literally in eternity right now. Celebration, stuff like that. Exactly. And that's why people like Francis Lucille, who's the teacher of Rupert Spira and whatnot, he calls all of this happening. He calls it the eternal fireworks, the 4th of July celebration, eternal. Fireworks and is a very good description. Also, I, I resonate with that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's like actually yeah. the, the awareness that is, you know, like it's basically like a firework itself. It is the source firework that every single moment it's, it's and it's basically uh, this whole dream is like the, the, the after effect of the firework. The firework itself is like the source and everything that appears in front of the firework is whatever is happening right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Brilliant. Exactly. Brilliant. Yeah. So, so I love that realization of eternity. It's so important, especially in the modern world, because the belief of physicalism, infinity and time and ego and all of those beliefs, one needs to, in a sense, reject those and take this intuitive leap to eternity and that's one of the a way to one of the pathless paths and and i'm glad that that was a it's a, yeah it's so beautiful so far let's uh let's continue and i'm glad that we also got to those fireworks oh my gosh those are <laughs> analogy i know yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So um, there was another trip. Um, wait a moment. Okay. There was another trip where basically um, uh, law of attraction was realized basically on an experiential level, because again, on LSD, basically all of these realization uh, realizations, I have no idea what any of these things are literally they're just spontaneously arising and being revealed to in front of the consciousness so um so uh, law of attraction was realized again i cannot i don't want to right now experience um sorry conceptually um tell you what it actually how i see it right now mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. how i would explain it we can go into that mm -hmm. uh, but um at that same day uh, there was a person I was um, browsing Reddit and there was a person who sent me a message on exactly 444 okay. and then he started talking to me and he, he, he told me that uh, he felt a calling to send me a message and to share with me some resources about God realization and he sent me um, Muji on YouTube Perfect. and a, a shit ton of books. Perfect. So um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and ah. I talked to him for like a, an hour and 11 minutes. So we ended the conversation on 555, completely spontaneous, just random. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, yeah, after a few weeks or so, I started looking into that and I started watching Muji. That was um, uh, very resonating, but still I was not extremely consistent with that. So I, I watched it, I watched it like but and still ha I was working at my part-time job in, well, it was not really part-time, I can say, uh, in Domino's Pizza. So, yeah. <laughs> and, you're, and, and you're like 18 years old or something right now? Yeah, yeah, at I was then? 18 then? or so, probably. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay. So, so you weren't, yeah, it's not full-time dedication to, yeah, to God, to God realization quite yet. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It was like eight hours a day uh, I was working in Domino's Pizza. Yeah. So, 
Um, where, where was I? And by the way, I have a question quick before yes. we keep going. You, you got the Muji resources. We'll, we'll get yes. right back. We'll get right back to it. What was the reaction of your mom, dad, and two brothers to you using LSD and healing oh. and healing from your depression and social anxiety? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, I fir the first time I did it, I did not tell them. Right, I'm just, I was, I just took it, and after a day later, I told them, "Listen, I took LSD," and they were like, "They, they were pretty much okay with it. <laughs> they were okay with it." Um, after like half a year, <laughs> and they were like pretty much okay with it. Yeah, really. <laughs> that's great yeah yeah that's great exactly yeah no and especially if you're telling them that you're healing depression and exactly i did not that. tell them that i just okay, took okay. the lsd because at the at the time i did not know what exactly were the effects other than i'm not sure if i even mentioned that it helped it helped my social anxiety i did tell them that it is for depression and social anxiety yeah and yeah, i believe yeah. i told them i believe it can help me but there were no actual um Got it. I could not say this is going to work definitely. Right? Got it. Got it. So that's great that they had enough openness. Yeah, because yeah, beca yeah because if fam is takes the hammer down and begins to beat the entheogen out of the the, the child's interest, that's and society doing that too. That's mm -mm. it's all changing. More enlightened civilization. Yeah, continue, please. It's a divine dream indeed. So yes, yes. The gods helped me. <laughs> yes, so, exactly. So you're, yeah. So you got the so interesting. You got at four four four. You got the god realization and Muji resources from someone on Reddit, and you're working eight hours a day at Domino's Pizza. The yes. call ended at five five five. I love this. Yes. So you asked about how they, um, they what, how, what were the effects um, after the LSD and how it affected my family. So around half a year later, for because at this point I was pretty much exper a bit experienced with the psychedelics, so they saw an amazing and and like it was like a person that is socially anxious and depressed is now extremely joyful all the time. Basically, well, not all the time because there was still no stable God realization, but a shit ton of ego was dissolved pretty much like and it didn't didn't come back still some ego was there was still identification with thoughts there is no doubt um was uh, but um so um how it affected the family so half a year later or so they saw the 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 um the huge change and they decided that they are also going to use LSD. What? My aunt, <laughs> my aunt started using LSD also because it saw how how amazingly it changed me and my older brother also started using it. Um, my mom started using it and my dad experimented with it and we started basically using psychedelics um, regularly in the whole family except my little brother right <laughs> oh my gosh this is the future <laughs> this is this but is let the me future. tell you even right. though even though uh, they did use the lsd they did not really go for god realization even though i was there to uh, like a few years later i told them listen listen this is god realization like this is the only thing that even that matters but yeah. they were still not willing to let go of their attachments of how they saw uh, life and stuff so like i cannot say it was probably helped in some way uh, to expand their consciousness but uh, not for god realization so yeah, um, yeah. it can yeah. still help uh, yeah. people to um, have a, a, a bit more fulfilling life and be less identified with their thoughts yeah. but uh, yeah, like ideally you would just use that and uh, utilize that for god realization not just take it and have some ego dissolution but actually go all the way because otherwise it's like for me uh, like i don't i don't see a point in that
like go all the I, way. I do see a point, and at the same time, it was yeah. like, yep, go all the way. Yeah, Charles Bukowski, I love that one. Go all the way. Yep, and that's what the perennial wisdom is about: is drilling all the way through the veil, all the way to the ocean, all the way to God realization, and. <clears throat> through the veilless veil. And it's cool that fam ended up expanding their consciousness in that sense. And so now we go back to the story where you got the resources. Yes. We got the resources. Yes. Yeah. So uh, pretty much, uh, I'm not sure even how much time has elapsed at that point, but around probably around half a year after the resources or a year after the resources, I started going into it. Um, uh, more strongly and at some point I wanted to leave my family because I pretty much literally because I was so um, I yep. saw reality so clearly that yep. they actually uh, were looking like demons to me right yeah but it yeah was not like um, like an egoic um, thought that they are demons no just they are literally completely delusional and they are perpetuating ignorance and suffering and are not willing to open up to God, right? Yep, so yep, it's, yep. you're pretty much a demon in yeah. my perception. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Um, wow, you are yeah, so, very, wow, 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 wow. Okay, just, <clears throat> just because even here is such a sensitive thing where we were talking about this for a little bit when we first started chatting before we recorded, where there's so much attachment to family and that I, I must be the one that brings God realization to my family. And there's that level of attachment is not wise. It's not graceful. And also to have the wisdom to look at the expression, the dreamed expression of what they are and see that their level is in a more egoic contracted state. And if they're delusional and they're perpetuating suffering and that they're not opening up to God realization, to know how to gracefully distance yourself. In this case, you'll explain your next steps in your trajectory here to us in a moment, but to also have the bravery and the courage to do that. So I just want to plant a big flag here because it's really important for other people to hear this because it's the wisdom to be able to distance yourself from your family into what is more space and freedom for yourself to bathe in the God realization, to abide in it more and more. And then, and then op opened you up to things like potentially us now and what's going to flower even more so. So just a big flag here for people, just remember that these are some of the most important bifurcations in the trajectory is to be wise and recognize when to leave the nest in that pursuit of piercing the veilless veil. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. At, at that point, it was like, it was even like, a bit scary like it was not like and again it's it's it was not an egoic fear it was literally a fear that that uh li like it's god telling you listen this is not it this is not it you really need to get out of here you really need to get out of here yeah i cannot really explain the kind of fear drive that is pushing you to actually detach from your family I also want to go back a little and share uh, uh, one time I took an LSD trip again and I went to the rooftop and I was just sitting in a, in a, a meditative pose, even though I don't really think it uh, mattered much. Anyway, uh, I had this realization of how much suffering there is 
in the world and how it, it's an, an absolutely insane, but there was like compassion was absolutely overflowing. I, I knew that uh, I'm here to, to be the peace, the love, the compassion and the wisdom for everyone in this planet. The, it, like, it was like a, a point of, of recognized responsibility that I have to God realize, I have to be God for everyone. I cannot, like, it's not a, a um, and it's not about anyone else. It's literally just um, for, 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 for existence, basically. It was like an existential responsibility to be what you are, to be love, because nobody is embodied. Nobody even knows what love is. They associate love with attachment. That's like the, the furthest um, thing from love. It's selfishness. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to share this. Um, Beautiful. I had a similar experience like that as well. So I love that. All right. So now you have this courage and the bravery to actually go. And how do you piece together that? And then how do you piece together the kind of the finances and actually pulling the, because you so did. I had like yeah, 40,000 yeah. shekels. It's like um, $12,000 saved from my job. Mm-hmm. So I could just leave. I could I could just leave the the home. At some point, there was a, the decision appeared to leave the the house and to just go to some other place. Um, is so this like I, is this like September twenty twenty or something? It was. Um, no, that was in twenty nineteen, in around November. Oh, sorry, October. Okay, October 2019. So a, a year a year ago and like three months ago. Yes. Months. And and so so yeah, so where did you go first? Because this is before Bulgaria. So where did you go first? Yeah, so I went to Switzerland to meet up with a friend, but that did not work out because it was extremely um, expensive there. So I, I can share another experience that happened there. Uh, that at some point I did not want to spend any money because it was extremely expensive. It was like yeah. $120 for one night stay in a hotel in like the cheapest hotel there. So I could not afford that. So at the, uh, at the first day in Switzerland, I basically slept outside in some kind of cabin of the bus station. Yeah. It was super cold. Yeah. And, and, but at like 7 a.m., I just realized, okay, this ain't going to work. I have to buy a room and I'm just going to fly from here to Thailand because yeah. Thailand is extremely cheap. So yeah. I could spend my time there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but at some point I wanted to go to the airport in Switzerland to fly to Thailand. And uh, a car stopped me on the highway and it told me, what are you doing on the, on the highway? Come into the car. And I was there, okay, let's go into, car, into, the, into the car. And they drove me to the airport and bought me some um, uh, some food and some water. And then they ordered even a, a hotel room for me. They literally ordered a hotel wow. room, okay, for free. And the room number was 222. <laughs> it was insane, insane for me. And I just decided, like, uh, there was the decision appeared to take 400 micrograms of LSD. And that was, let me tell you that uh, that was not a smart decision. <laughs> that was like, I, I went uh, extremely into it because the ego resisted. So um, um, yeah, I got into a, a delusional loop of absolute paranoia. And I thought that these two people who ordered the room for me, they were going, they specifically did that to then uh, kidnap me and kill me. That I actually believe that. <laughs> so I just took the most uh, valuable stuff like my phone and my wallet and I just ran outside of the hotel. I started running like like literally the fastest I ever ran, probably like, uh, uh, well, I don't know. I don't want to say a speed for no reason, but I literally just zoomed out of there. Okay, I was, I was running for like probably a kilometer at least, just sprinting. And because you are on LSD, you have this extreme... Uh, power in your in your everything you are you are just um you are able to run super fast and super uh, 
uh, powerfully. I cannot explain, but these are one of the effects of LSD. You can also um, work out uh, more effectively and stuff like that. So you, could pro you can probably run uh, more effectively also. Um, at some point, uh, I, I just sat down. I, I, I needed to relax, but uh, everywhere I looked, even there, even though there were pretty much no cars, I was extremely paranoid. I really wanted to just uh, sit down and meditate. So I went. I, I looked up a a, a park, uh, the nearest park on the map, and I wanted to go there. Um, so I started walking, but the park the park was closed. So I sat near. Uh, a, a building I just sat there was doing nothing and some car drove by and the guy went out and he told me what the hell are you doing here what are you doing I, I, I was like in, it was like 3 a.m right and I'm just sitting there like what the hell am I doing there <laughs> it would look weird to anyone right and he was like what the hell are you doing here but it appeared to me as if he was aggressive and the paranoia was still there so I was pretty sure he's going to uh, get a gun out of his pocket so I was just okay okay I'm leaving I zoomed out of there as fuck so I zoomed out of there to the another park and then I, I was I I got a bit um, uh, more detached from that and I just called the taxi. Okay, let's go back to the room. Uh, and then I just slept and stuff like that. I started reading about healing the inner child, which actually was probably a waste of time because the inner child is the one that you should slaughter. That is basically the egoic mind that is the one that is uh, blocking your uh, God realization, basically. So healing that is pretty much a waste of time in retrospect. But whatever, it happened. Also, I utilized a lot of MDMA. Well, not a lot, probably like three, four times to heal um, and open up. Uh, because the first time I did it, it was insane. It, it was super profound. I also candy flipped LSD with MDMA. And that was super, super amazing. Let me tell you, these substances mm -hmm. are super cool. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so... Uh, wh wh where was I on the storyline? <laughs> so you went to Switzerland. About, yeah, the Switzerland move. Okay, and, so after wow. that, I went to Thailand and I took. Okay, so uh, you did. Wow. Okay. I did okay. what? I did what? Cool. I was, because I, this is interesting to make the transition to to Thailand and also that that trip that you had that sort of it's it's sort of important to have this wide variety of trips where there are these experiences that are like what you described a delusional loop and and it's 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 important to share i've had i've had some like that totally yeah so Definitely. that yeah, is exactly. why now sorry no, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so now that is why I recommend because I don't really like a lot of people swear by having this delusional loop on LSD. Everyone is saying no, if there's no anxiety, then it's not good. But that is just their egoic mind. It wants to still be attached. That is why they like the anxiety. They say the anxiety is necessary in the trips because that is exactly what is holding you um, still identified. But if there was no anxiety, you could just realize God, a completely complete ego dissolution with no resistance. Some people just want the anxiety because they are afraid of completely letting go. <laughs> so that is why I recommend using utilizing Fennibut substance that kills anxiety. It's legal pretty much everywhere. And you take that alongside the LSD and you just have the most blissful God realization trip. So uh, you, you don't need the anxiety. You don't need the delusion loop. It's not necessary um, in my perception right now. So uh, yeah, that, that's what I wanted to share. Y yes, and agreed that the more intelligent and wise that we become, the less we'll perpetuate the ignorant delusional loops and the more we'll be able to, as children, just infants just come into the world is to help with the pedagogy and the the infrastructures for god realization at very young ages so okay it's so yeah yeah and available because there was one experience when i tried to enlighten my little brother right and i told him listen what what, what is this reality what is what is everything right and he actually realized experientially that this is a dream and he was like ah oh, 
he, he was literally as if he was on MDMA. He was just 12. He was just absolutely bl blissed out. He literally realized that he is God. He was literally completely impersonal with me. I was impersonal at that point. Uh, I was aware of being aware. And he was impersonal with me. And it was just, just beautiful. Very beautiful. Because it's just, well, you cannot really exp explain the connection that is between oneself with oneself, like myself with you right now, because we are literally one. Well, it, there is no personal identity, which is the, the, the most retarded thing ever. <laughs> so from, from Switzerland, I flew to Thailand and I had a, another trip with the Fanny Bud this time. I took one, uh, sorry, 1000 micro uh, milligrams of How do we, So what, what is this? What, so what is Fanny Bud? F-H-E-N Fanny I B U T, but B U T. Fenibut. Okay, P H E N I B U T. Fenibut. Interesting. Yes. And Fenibut. so, Fenibut. Oh, and also spelled F E N I B U T. Yes. Uh, it's a central nervous system depressant used to treat anxiety, insomnia for a variety of other indications. It's like many people describe it uh, close to MDMA or close to an alcohol high, but without the, the confusion. It's super clear, super sober, and you just have bliss and ego dissolution, basically. Okay, so close to an MDMA high and ego but dissolution. Super light, basically, it's and it's like 12 to 18 hours. 12 to 18 hours? Yeah, but it's very light at some point. Oh, right? okay, okay, okay. It's like it peaks wow. after three hours for like six hours or so, and then it's okay. uh, it uh, goes down. And then you call it candy flipped when you add the LSD mm -hmm. to it. No, uh, candy flip is when you add MDMA to LSD. LSD, and then when you add Fenibut to LSD. We don't have a name, but uh, we okay. can probably make something. Make up. something up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. And I see that the Fenny butt is also the prescribed in Russia. I wonder if that's where it's originated. Yeah. Probably. Okay. But it's available. Like you can order it in the in Europe or in the U.S. You can probably. Uh, okay. Get it anywhere. Okay. Cool. Okay. So then you did this in Thailand. Yes. So I took okay. one thousand micrograms, which a, which is a medium dose, and I took two hundred micrograms of LSD. And that was the most blissful experience ever. Like there was how just. You, how are you getting these in Thailand? Are you are I you bringing the, these on uh, the airplane? I, yeah, I took it on the airplane. <laughs> 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 I hid it inside the Fanny Bud bottle, the tabs. Wow. And so. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Continue. Yeah, you had a very blissful experience. Okay extremely blissful experience it was that like complete complete ego death okay um and there was just so much gratitude and love for um myself as the, the as the fifth dimension there i was looking at the mirror and there was a recognition that this is this is like literally a fifth dimensional being right now which, which i'm perceiving Right. And, and I was that I was like that, which is perceiving behind the eyes. I was the spirit itself. Uh, so I was the screen, just empty screen. And it was super clear and wow. just so much gratitude, so much love for myself um, as spirit, not as a, a person. <laughs> so it was just amazing, 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 amazing. Um, yeah, this is what I wanted to share. And from there, um, this was, okay, okay. So in Thailand, after a month or a, a month and a half later, I was sitting in my room. I had pretty much no LSD left. I only had Fanny Butt, but I was not using Fanny Butt on that day. I started reading the book of Gangaji, uh, You Are That. Yeah. So because I had these experiences on LSD, I realized what it is referring to is the, this, this loving awareness that I fell in love with, basically. Um, so I just realized that, okay, I, I am that. I'm, I'm just not going to believe any 
thought, any feeling, anything that tells me otherwise. I'm just not going to believe that. I know. I just know. It, and it was just, it was not, not just intellectual. I just, like, there was just this spontaneous recognition that I am that. Like, everything makes sense, basically. Uh, so from wow. there, I started abiding as the awareness, like always in remembrance of what I am. Yeah. And a month later, I started, um, well, even at, at that point, I started writing on Reddit a lot of posts, uh, helping people to realize uh, what they are. And I was recommending the utilization of substances also. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so I'm saying that um, I was really um, um, uh, pretty much God realized a year and two months ago. Yeah, yeah. December 2019, right? Uh, uh, it was probably like November or December. Yeah, cool, cool. So beautiful. beautiful. Uh, from there, yeah, I just uh, continued on this, um, yep. on this helping people and continuing utilizing uh, psychedelics for uh, uh, even for further like dissolving of whatever remnants, whatever contraction ever yeah. appeared right? Because you have this guidance on Rupert Spire's channel also, yeah. these yoga meditations that are, are there to help you to, to unpack all the, wh whatever is left and continue dissolving it because it's an unending process. So uh, I kept using that and uh, dissolving more and more and more for the God realization to flourish more and more and more. Um, and I left the family, right? Because I saw they are very much delusional and I have no interest in staying with them. I was literally like, no, just remove myself from that completely. But um, at some point I went back and um, uh, after a while it was realized again, like, no, 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 no. Just no. And this now uh, I left yes. about, uh, four months ago. Okay, so okay, so you left uh, like around t the beginning of 2020 from Thailand back to Israel. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was around uh, February. Oh, interesting. My father did okay. not yet come back to Israel because he was stuck in Georgia because of the COVID that arised. So I was still just with my mother, and I helped her realize all kinds of stuff, and it did help her, but it it. Like she was not willing to just let go. Exactly, right? exactly. She was getting um, drunk every day. And I told her, listen, this is not going to help you with God realization. Yeah. And she told me, no, okay, listen, I know this is important, but she probably only said that because I was pushing her to that. And I'm not going to be an officer that, that is every time <laughs> looking at you and telling you what to do, right? I'm not going to um, like uh, pursue yeah. you for this. If yes, you don't yes. want it, then you just don't exactly. want it. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, at some point my father came back and then I saw just, just how delusional they are, how they have these retarded arguments over nothing and they suffer for no reason. And it's just, what the hell am I watching? And it's what, it was just super, <laughs> just, just silliness. And I realized uh, I'm, I'm just leaving. This is not going to work. I, I, I have no interest in that. And I left four months ago. And with the finances, now I, w I was just using the finances that I had from donations that uh, I made the, made the Instagram page and I was asking for donations because um, I knew that I, I have to leave. And the moment I had like uh, $1,000, I just left. I just left. I don't know how I'm going to bring more money or whatever. I just trusted that yeah. this is what I have to do. There's no other option. So I just left. I just left on a moment's notice. Yep, uh, exactly. Uh, and yeah, just uh, YOLO. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, <clears throat> here we are now. Okay, so <clears throat> I love how you in Thailand ended up recognizing that you are that and also the abiding, which is which is it that's 
we we are in the non-dual tradition we are already it always and in the dualistic concession it's ah there's something to do there's something to seek there's an abiding that needs to happen i need to abide more and more to it and which we'll unpack more um in a bit but and i'm glad that you found that that's so critical and then that as Rumi says, the diamond necklace that's already around your neck. And then again, there's this thing. It's just, it's always, it happens so much to people where there's like, I'm going to go back home. I'm going to do the God realization for these closest people in my life. And it, and again, it just, it didn't work. And it was very clear to you. And then it was like time to, Go to the next step fundraising via the Instagram. I'm glad people came in and helped you out to be able to leave to Bulgaria. And, I, and I'm also really glad that you caught on quickly about the family has retarded arguments for no reason. That is the essence of the perpetuation of delusional suffering uh, and to recognize that is really important and then to gracefully and wisely distance. Um, so it's good. So, okay, so now you left approximately in, is that September, 2020 to Bulgaria or so? Uh, it was October again, actually. It was just a, month, a, a year later after the first time I left. Perfect, perfect, okay. Uh, Bulgaria, October, 2020. And then, so, um, so since then, You spent about three months there. So, and most recently, about two weeks ago, moved to Istanbul, Turkey. So, because that's how long you can stay three months at a time without visa. Just, okay. So what did you, in the last three months, it looks like as I look through your, your Instagram and you look through ours, you very clearly see that we're, we're getting transmissions from many of the same people. So what have you been doing these three months in past three months in Bulgaria first? Let's start there. So um, pretty much just abiding. Yeah. Like, uh, what can I say more? Yeah. I don't know. At some point I ordered some LSD and Fanny Bud. There was a calling to again utilize these substances and um, uh, go even uh, deeper into this um, uh, yeah this is what was happening we can say cool and what is your for you what does the abiding process look like over those three months I don't, I don't really know how to really explain this, but I, I really, I really don't know how to even comment on that because if someone asks me uh, how to like, what do I do with this? Okay. I realized I'm the awareness or like there's an awareness, ever present awareness. So I would tell just um, like ideally you would realize there's an ever present awareness and it would just, just be enough because like that that's it and it abides by itself like the awareness yeah. is abiding by itself it's not like someone is doing something yeah but um, I guess if you are too identified, even if you notice there's an ever-present awareness, somehow you get pulled into the delusion loop and it doesn't necessarily happen on psychedelics. You get into delusion oh, yeah. loop sober also. Yeah, like you were saying with your when your family's having stupid arguments. And, that's pretty and, mine, and minus two, that's the delusion loop. Exactly. It happens to sober people with their ego all the time. I, exactly. That's like actually 99% of people are yeah. all in a constant uh delusion loop 
yeah, yeah. So yeah, I guess if someone is is frequently getting into these, then I would tell them, no, listen, just don't identify, don't identify. So probably that, that was the key. Don't identify. It was not that I'm abiding as the awareness, I'm being aware of being aware. It was more like I just um, notice whatever appears, whatever thought appears, or whatever feeling or sensation appears and just don't identify. The abidance ap happens by itself. The awareness is already here. Yes. Just don't believe any thought, emotion, sensation, perception, or experience. Don't identify with it. The awareness will stay clear by itself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. For me, it's been a lot similar to that. So... There's almost a relaxing, in a sense, backward, inward as well has been kind of also one of the, the feelings and the analogies that we use so frequently are really salient. The, the emotion, thought, feeling, perception, belief, object is the cloud and to recognize yourself as the sky, the ever present awareness of the sky. Yeah. And that sort of the analogies, whether it be also the ocean, the ocean, and then the waves, or the, the blank paper, and the words, or the even in the modern world, the screen, and then all of the modulations, which is one of the analogies that you used earlier when you had that abiding process awakened to, you felt the emptiness of the screen and that's what it is. It's the emptiness of the screen. And we talked about the fireworks analogy. So the empty screen gets the eternal fireworks display. Fireworks would uh, probably be uh, like um, um, a metaphor means like, yeah. Or another word for like. Oh, analogy. Analogy. Yeah. So, so the screen, like, there is no real separation between the screen and the movie, right? It's still yes. the screen. But if you use the fireworks, it's like the fireworks is the projector, and it's always like burning every single moment. It's showing the screen, right? And the screen is what's happening basically. Like the movie is what's ha what's happening from the projector. So that's like the sky and the, the clouds passing and the sky is the, the firework basically. But of course uh, you go further into it and you realize that actually whatever appears in the sky or in the, in the screen is just the screen itself modulating the pixels of itself appearing as if mm. there's a movie, but actually it's the screen alone is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like something important that has been helping is the faith and the trust and the surrender because there's been a good amount of people that have come and helped support you. And I'm so happy that that's happened. That's critical. And hopefully we can help be a resource for that as well. Yeah. The, the, the love that was revealed through ego dissolution and through ego death, it's like you just know something is here for you. So it's like you can just throw your life away basically in trust and faith. And you just know that, that something loves you so much that you just can trust it. You literally ju just, yeah. you, you just know. And it's, it's not like even you have faith or you believe or hope. It's like, you just know there's so much love that. Yeah. Wow. I'm really happy that we got through the story because my goodness, 
It, that's very unique. It's very unique and it's, and there's critical components to it, like the massive pressure cooker suffering being like a drill sergeant and then finding the entheogens. That is actually why I want to expand on my posts, why I'm so aggressive, because I am being that this drill sergeant basically. And oh, it's people push, even if they unsubscribe, unfollow, they hate me. It still touches something inside them that, that makes them realize that this is not how life should be. This is not my full potential. And this, even just one post being read so aggressively, they that just that that in the long term it somehow helps. Interesting. So I noticed that about Sebastian's posts on Instagram, I am eternal life, the links in the bio below, that they're very, very God realized. And they're also very aggressive. So as he just described a moment ago, he's acting like the drill sergeant. And I think that's a really interesting angle because basically everybody else in the God realized space is doing it like an angel. And so in a sense, I do my best to kind of be somewhere along the middle grounds of that. And I do think there's a massive role for the more hyper direct aggressive. It was and, like, yeah. I want to share something that when I took the LSD and there was this initial ego dissolution, God that was realized basically because you are much more open to God and its intelligence flowing through your body mind. And it was very direct, very tough love. You understand? So it really resonates with me because that's how that that's literally how God loved me. He loved me with not like petting me necessarily. It was very tough, very, very fierce. Yeah. So I, I just uh, follow uh, my spirit. Wow. I see. I see. So God's love for you was really hard drill sergeant style awakening. And so you followed that spirit and passing it along. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm following cool. but it, at the same time it was fierce at times yeah. at times it was also very very like open, totally very, uh, like feminine right there was the masculine love that is very tough and there is also the feminine side of god's love that is uh, much more gentle much more just just hugs you just gives you a kiss On my end, I've had similar style yin yang of that more drill sergeant mixed with the more warm bath in a sense. And in combinations of the two and it's yeah it's been it's yeah those are uh, i'm loving it I'm loving the loving the convo i'm so happy that we that we did the unpacking because so many profound insights happened for me along the way as well around just the sheer importance of entheogens is a really important one um because and the perverse incentives of a lot of the pharma um and I like how we got to eternal fireworks, God realization, stabilization, and the bliss. Those are so good, so good. Um, getting being wise and separating oneself from delusional family, perpetuating suffering, abiding as awareness, recognizing you are that. All right, let's do some of the topics that we like discussing on the show the journey was so so beautiful i love it i love it 
So let's start with, let's start with simultaneity. Another way to say it is integrality. So being integral. Please expand on this. Yes, yes. Feel free to ask anytime. So integral is when everything is accounted for. Similarly with simultaneity, it's when simultaneously everything is accounted for. What exactly do you mean by everything is accounted for? It means everything. It's like everything and nothing. It's when in this case, let me, I'll just explain it. And then we'll go, we'll hear how you, how you think from here. So when, when we say simultaneity, what we say is what happened like a thousand years ago was the formulation of the Taijitu, which is the monist symbol that also has the yin and yang within it. So it's the monism one with the yin and yang. So it's trying to showcase the expression of the non-dual with the expression of the dual. So the dual within the non-dual. Yeah, exactly. So the dualistic concession within the non-dual, exactly, yep. And so that's why the idea of simultaneity has become really important or integrality, which is that it's not that, it's not just that everything simply is and isn't, just non-dual, but it's also the dualistic concession, which is that there is something to seek, there's something to do, because when somebody has suffering, what they're looking for is they're looking for the vortex of people at the top of the mountain that are like what you had, like, why did the person send you Muji, right? They could have easily sent you like some other like self-actualization coach, like a self-help book, right? But they sent you Muji, which is a love, which is self-realization or God realization. So there is some sort of, in a sense, a hierarchy to the dualistic concession in the terms of people around the planet that understand the absolute, that understand infinity, that understand non-duality, that are enlightened, that are God realized, etc. And so for us to hold both at the same time where A, non-dual, there's nothing to do. Everything already is and isn't. That's it. And then B, which is there's a dualistic concession, which is there is a mountain. So we call this the flat mountain. So the flat is the non-dual and the dualistic concession is the mountain. So how do you feel about, because obviously we can't describe the ineffable. And so the number one thing is to just not use symbols to try and describe the undescribable, just, just abide as peace and bliss and childlike awe and wonder and just surrender to the flow, surf on the crest of the expression that you are in the dream. But then there's also the, along with the ineffable, there's also the, well, one of the most fun things to do is for us to try and use symbols to play as close as we can to the ineffable. So how do you feel about, about that? Um, can you like formulate the question in a... Yeah, let me try. So how do you feel about the ineffable? How do you feel about trying to use symbols to describe it? Like what we were like saying with simultaneity. You mean like the absolute? Yeah, yeah. I don't really describe it... Um, at all it's lit it's literally ineffable it's literally beyond all description beyond beyond the awareness itself yeah so i don't even even touch that subject unless someone approaches me and asks uh, like what what is that and then i would i would tell him that that's where the awareness comes from yeah exactly <laughs> yeah that's the perfect answer <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
So actually, a few months ago, when I I took my first big dose in a while LSD of LSD, like it was like um, one twenty, uh, right? So uh, I took the dose, and there was this uh, realization of that which is dreaming the awareness itself. Yeah, that, that is the absolute. It cannot be perceived. It's but it is recognized that it is literally dreaming the awareness in which everything appears. So it's it's that. like that. That's that's the clearest way uh, that I yeah. can describe it. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, from my understanding, that's the clearest way to describe it as well. Yeah. <sighs> if somebody comes up to me and asks me, well, what is that absolute? Oh, that's where the awareness comes from. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually funnier than, than it was perceived before. They, it is they, so funny. Laughing at this because it, it's really, it's so profound. Yeah. And yet it's like so simple. It's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep, yep. <sighs> that which dreams the awareness. Because uh, I also watched some of Bentinho's uh, videos uh, of the Infinity series. Yep. And it was very um, resonating because I had the intuitive recognition of what, of the absolute, but he actually explained that there's this, like, the, the infinite, infinity itself uh, dreams like a bubble of consciousness that's just the pure awareness that is eternal, relatively. And in the awareness appears like whatever comes and goes, right? But uh, even even like the awareness itself, it's it's timeless, but it's it's still it came from somewhere. It's not literally the 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 the, the infinity itself, even though it is unlimited. Whatever appears in it, anything can appear in it. In that way, it is unlimited, and uh, beyond this this uh, consciousness just pure timeless consciousness there's the the literal infinity itself so uh, definitely i i loved how he uh, also expanded on that i recommend also checking out if you haven't already the infinity series that is free on his channel yeah likewise with Bentinho being a profound influence and also that coming in with many of these intuitive realizations and when we tap into Rupert Spira a bit or Bentinho or a little bit of Ramana Maharshi, Nisargatha Maharaj, Muji, etc. We pick up something unique like with Ramana Maharshi I picked up Sahaja Samadhi and so it's what very it's like the tantric path or the middle path or the middle way or the Goldilocks zone it's when you take Sahaja your sudden enlightenments when you take that and you do the met you take that and you weave it into your daily activities integrate it integrate it exactly Exactly. And so I take these beautiful bits from all of these different, it's just so incredible. It's such a, that's one of the most important things in my opinion to do, which is to create a, a lattice work or conceptual framework or a worldview that is very perennial. So I pull a lot perennial, from, what mean exactly? yeah, so, so, per, so perennial means it's found across the planet. Mm. So meaning across the planet, the different mystic traditions across the planet point to the same one end. Mm -hmm. And so when you pull a little bit from like Sufi metaphysics, and then you pull a little bit from Tao Te Ching, pull a little bit from Dzogchen, from Theravada Buddhism, from entheogens, 
from the Old and New Testament, from all these different sources, what happens is you gain this incredible lattice work that makes you like makes you like a ninja. You like are, a, it's very indeed indeed it is very cool to be able to read from someone from a, a, an enlightened enlightened being that you never heard about but you see what he is typing and like for the normal person it would be what the hell is he talking about and you have never read these words but you know exactly what they mean this timeless wisdom has this passing along and to be on the receiving side of it after dozens and dozens of visits to these concepts. Seeking, for me, it was five years. And five years of, of knowing what you are seeking exactly, like God realization, I'm seeking this, or like seeking just ha happiness, and you did not know exactly what it is. Yep, the latter. Yep. I see. Yep. So in that in that sense, then it would probably be like uh, four four years for me, I guess. But yep. it was actually recognized as God realization. Exactly. Exactly. Like a year ago or so, or so, or a year and a half ago, probably. Yeah, and for me, it's probably been like six weeks. <laughs> uh, because I would go to Tatva Masi, you are that, I am that, we are that, and I would see that a couple dozen times over the last, let's say, couple of years, and especially like this last summer. I'd be looking at that and I'd be like, we are it. We are it. We are it. Yeah. And like, it would be so fun to, in a sense, recognize myself today, the way I see myself six months ago is that the way that I was getting it was not from God realization, but from oneness in a sense. It wasn't from non-duality. It was from oneness. These are very interestingly intricate. You, we have to unpack the words for it to make sense, but it's something like oneness can mean in a very physicalism way, oneness. That There you go. That's probably the easiest way to put it. If you think about oneness from a physicalism way, that's probably where I was six months ago or so. I understood the significance of consciousness and the significance of spirituality and these types of things, but I didn't understand that. It really originates like the awareness itself or even beyond because like i would um say that the oneness that most people are relating to is like the sense of connectedness the sense of unity with all human beings or with all beings in the planet itself but they don't actually go the step beyond that which is the realization of awareness which is where where all of this dream appears from and, and beyond that. 
So perfect. And that's why I really like the the words physicalism oneness. Yes. It, it, yeah, that's probably one of the best ways to put it. And so in a sense, we, we revisit these concepts. So we were talking about this lattice work and all of this timeless wisdom coming down through the Upanishads or the Tao Te Ching or the Old and New Testament or the Sufi metaphysics or the entheogens or Theravada Buddhism, Zen, Dzogchen, whatever. It's coming from all of these different mystic traditions as different faces, different paths to the same one end. It's like they're different flavors of ice cream, but they're all ice cream. And you, I would look at this 12 months ago. I'd look at it six months ago. I'd look at it even, you know, two, three months ago, two months ago, I'd be looking at it, but I didn't have that last breakthrough Satori until about six weeks ago, where even the physicalism itself became more and more illusory in the prioritization of awareness and slash consciousness as God, as the God realization, and that being shared among all 8 billion units in this creation design. And then, then all of the other creation designs happening. And then in the last, whatever, two or four weeks, is when the further is like, well, what's the last thorn? Well, the last thorn is awareness itself. And that's why you said that what is the ineffable is where awareness originates from. Yeah. So, you know, this is so, so fresh and so new, you know, to, to me, and it's really cool I love the fact that you're here so young is so important. It's really important for us to, to galvanize the resources to help you sustain yourself and grow and prosper. And in a sense, you're very much like our younger brother. And that is really important for us to help. And also in many ways, the older brother, as you also share wisdoms that really resonate with us and teach us as well. And so this is really sacred and beautiful. And yeah, I adore the, the tennis is what we call it. We call it tennis. This is tennis. It's like the, yeah, yeah, yeah we're just hitting, hitting the, the ball back, the but same the player. Same one. Exactly. The <laughs> it's the same one in two different units that are dreamed, hitting the ball back and forth, talking about itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. It's so funny. And so I'm glad that we got to also physicalism oneness because I hadn't had a descriptor for it before, but that's, that's really the descriptor for it. And the leap, it's a very intuitive leap that has to happen to the eternity of awareness as the prior, as the prior. And that's a, that's a difficult leap for people to make until you give them the analogies. The dream analogy is a good one. That's probably maybe a good place to go. Um, and that's also probably another good thing to mention to you is that although you are very much in the abidance of the awareness itself, for you to also continue to look up, are you familiar with words like Maya and Leela in Sanskrit? Um, familiar yes but i don't really use them like for me maya yeah. would be just the, the the play the dream itself whatever appears on the most superficial level yeah yeah yep and then leela is the divine play 
it's yeah, very for me they're pretty yeah. much synonymous yeah right? very similar yeah very similar yeah exactly um except you know lila is more like the divine play the game that the one is playing and then the maya is when you are trapped in delusion maya is the intoxication exactly yeah yep yep so precisely and so the, basically what i was getting at is that as you build it's still important for you to build out this sort of lattice work because being 20 and being where you're at right now is amazing and fantastic yet the more that you pick up these sort of profound truths aphorisms across the different timeless mystic traditions and and put those up in your lattice the more and more it will not only become natural for you in abiding but also for your ability to help people in your private one-on-ones more efficiently exactly. holding by itself in the dream there's a natural attraction to uh, exploring all kinds of uh, different uh, paths uh, paths and um like um pretty much what you are describing like even even now even though theoretically i could just leave all videos alone i still every time a rupert spira or a shunya murti or or muji or eckhart tolle post a video then i watch it just naturally not not not, not even for any purpose it's just so natural it's just unfolding it, so. it's so natural just unfolding exactly that's good that you're you are doing that's great great probably a good place to go next is the dream the dream analogy because as above so below as we go and for a third of our lives go and sleep and then for a good portion of that we simulate out a dream and immerse ourselves into it in the first person observer perspective as we do that there's no separation between the observer and its environment. You can't have a dream, simulate a dream without an observer. So this, as, as that's below, so as above, would be God's dream. The one's dreams. These creation designs as dreams. And we are that, and we are the immersed first person agent. And so how do you like the dream analogy? How do you tell the dream analogy? It's very, very useful. Um, I always um, use, it, use the dream analogy in the way that uh, basically the same way that you go to sleep, apparently, and you have a dream right? You have a dream and you dream a dream body, a dream uh, universe. And you are not the dream body. You are not the dream universe. It's obvious to you that you are not the dream body, not the dream universe. It's just appearing temporarily, but you are not that. You are the consciousness that is aware of it. So the same way right now, this is the exact same dream. You are not this dream body. You are not any of this universe, you are that which is dreaming it. You are the, the consciousness modulating itself in the present moment to appear as the, the universe, as the body. But you are not um, like literally any of the dream. The dream and the body and the universe comes and goes, but the consciousness itself is what you are. So that is um, uh, how, how, I, uh, how I use it. I also uh, want to share that um, the more uh, you are, um, the ego is dissolving, you are much more lucid in the normal dreams also, like, well, not in the waking state dream, in the dream dream, <laughs> in the dream dream. Uh, you also uh, have much more lucid experiences. You actually wake up to the fact that this is a dream, literally inside the dream, not even with any practice. You are, I, I am not practicing to be lucid in my dreams, but it's happening by itself. I start flying consciously, literally consciously moving around the dream, watching the, the, the scenery, watching the trees, 
looking at, at objects in the dream and seeing how they are similar to the waking state dream. And it's uh, absolutely profound, very, very beautiful. I've never had the experience where in my dream, I become lucid. So in my simulated dream at night laying in the bed. So in this dream, I go to bed and dream where I become lucid. And then I choose to go to bed in that dream and then make another dream. No, that did not happen to me. <laughs> I just want, it just came up while you were saying that though. And <laughs> <laughs> That would be insane. A dream inside a dream. Oh my gosh. The simplicity of this is right under our noses. <clears throat> it's closer to us than the images on the screen. That's so funny. Yeah, the way you describe it is great. Do you feel like the reason why you have, oh, wait, let me pull up your quote first. Your other dream quote is, uh, if you know what you are, the dreamer of dreams, then you are not able to suffer. Yes. Such a good one. Expand a bit for us. So the dreamer of the dream refers to the consciousness that is modulating itself to appear as a dream. So when you uh, know that this is a dream, just like if you put a VR set, okay, you get into a game where there are uh, people shooting you, you will not be afraid, you will not suffer the fact that people are shooting you. It will be just, okay, it's a play, it's not real, right? So when you realize this is also a dream, whatever appears is not real it's a vr set that you are seeing basically it's a dream then you are just not able to suffer you are not identified with whatever appears so the same way uh, just like it's basically god realization if you know you are the dreamer of the dream so of course with god realization you are not able to suffer exactly i'm glad you took us into the vr territory as well because you would never be playing a video game and the character, yeah, suffers in some way and to mistake in that for an actual experience of suffering. Yeah. It's like, even if you put a VR set, you play an, a, a, a super scary game, like you have jump scares and stuff. Okay, even if you are there, you will not be suffering. <laughs> You will not be like that. You will, oh, oh, okay. It's just a game. It's just a game. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm glad you took us into that VR territory. It's probably a good time then to also ask you if you, because you played a lot of games growing up. I played so many games growing up. I played a lot of Sega Genesis. I played a lot of PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Xbox. I played a lot of... Xbox 360 played a lot of PC games like Warcraft and Age of Empires and stuff like that. So Starcraft. So what games did you play? And then I'll ask you the follow-up question after that. Yeah, so I played uh, a lot of uh, um, um, games like um, Stickman, I guess, stuff like that on, oh, the, Stickman. Uh, on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Many games on the internet. For I cannot sure. name them because they're so... Uh, old at this point. Yep. 
played Maple Story, Counter Strike, Combat Arms, um, Call of Duty, Stalker. It's oh like a game. Um, League of Legends. Yep. RF Online, Terra. That's pretty much uh, what, what I remember right now. Maybe if you continue expanding yes. on this there more. Yes. Yeah, when we play Call of Duty and we begin the Battlefield. Team, Battlefield. Battlefield. Yep. When we begin the the game of Call of Duty or Battlefield, when the characters spawn in Team Deathmatch, we don't say that they're birthed. And when they die, we don't say that they die. Just playing a game. It would it would be very much actually um, 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 similar to how this apparent reality works. When this body mind dies, you just spawn in a, like another body mind spawns in its place. So like if you go to sleep and you have a dream and you get run over by a truck, did you die? No, you did not die. There's just another dream that replaced the other dream. So what you are can never die. When this body mind dies in the apparent waking state, there's just another dream. There's There might be another body mind or ma might be some kind of formless dream. Maybe you don't even have a body mind. You just are some in, in some kind of other dimension in which you don't need a body mind. Yeah. Stuff like that. Anything, literally anything. Yeah, exactly. Even outside of this, the restrictions of this specific creation design itself, where we go outside of the the two eyes and four limbs and the the carbon-based DNA encoded vehicle, and we go to some formless being that you pop into that expression of and it's really well explained as a hit back i like that one a lot that was good and so is the in the dream when you die you get run over by a truck you move on to the next dream and in the game when you there's no birth and death of the characters and yeah, and that's that's why I believe Rupert Spira talks a lot about the whirlpool. The whirlpool analogy is a pretty good one in the field. The field of whatever we want to say, the formless, the field of the formless of awareness. We can say that the whirlpool of this unit For personally, like I don't really use the whirlpool analogy. It's not very too too clear for me, so I I don't use that. It's too like, clear, or it's not clear enough. Not very clear for me. Like, so like it's, in the ocean, right? In the ocean. Yes. There's little whirlpools. Yes. And the whirlpool ends, and the next whirlpool begins. Something like that. I see. Yeah. I see. Stuff okay, like that, that. That's very simple, actually. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this is another good part about the tennis getting cl close to that. Yeah, ineffable. It clarifies. It clarifies a lot. I learn a lot. We help one another a lot. Yeah. So, all right. So, the follow up question to the video games is Do you feel like what we're building right now with artificial general intelligence and indistinguishable virtual realities and Neuralink and bio and neurotechnology, all this type of stuff. It's sent, it's being synthesized into what's called like the metaverse. Basically, have you seen Ready Player One, the movie? No. I recommend watching it. The idea is that in a couple of decades, those technologies will become so good that we'll immerse ourselves into these infinite designer realities and that we will go and play in them for you know eighty years or something, and that's like what. Like Solidarity Online, if you if you watch the anime. What, what's which what's which anime? Sword Sword Art Online. 
Oh, Sword Art Online. Interesting. So they have a VR set and they put it and they have a little world, a creation design in which you are inside of it. And it's basically a dream within a dream within a dream. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Cool. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Interesting. So near future and play through various virtual reality MMORPG worlds. Yeah. Well, that's what this is. Do you, th do you think that's what this is? This is pretty much it. This yeah. is yeah, the apparent waking state is like GTA 5 with upgraded graphics. It's literally, look, well, not yeah. GTA 5, just GTA, I guess. It's literally just an open world game. It's literally what God is playing right now. Yeah. Interesting. So it's like the... It's almost like, yeah, waking state is GTA. And then it's like God is like the decentralized kind of like. Eight. Playing the controller. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. And I'm going to check out Sword Art Online. It kind of reminds me a bit of, did you ever see the Midnight Gospel, Duncan Trussell's show? No. He, he kind of also enters into all of these different virtual worlds, but that's um, this is pretty cool. Um, I'm happy that you pointed me to this. Very interesting. I, I definitely have heard incredible things about uh, anime, and I haven't dived in in too that's, much. That's a fun. Yeah. And yeah, the signal, finding the signal is always the thing. So you, I feel like this is probably a good signal uh, over instead of the noise. You know what I mean? Signal instead of noise. What, what do you mean exactly? You know, like when, if you go on like, like television and you click through channels, it is basically a bunch of polarization propaganda and people trying to sell you shit that you don't need and all this type of garbage. Versus if you like go and like buy the Tao Te Ching or something. Okay, but anime, I would not uh, say it is like the Tao, Tao Te Ching. But well, well, Sword Art Online is probably at least it can probably help you and make you like uh, bring up some creative ideas, stuff yeah. like exactly, yeah. yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, cool, cool. Yeah, because it's important to point people towards like what are like the best signal in anime and would you say that sword art online is some of the best signal i would not say that i just mentioned it because we are talking about vr and what, stuff like that. what is some of the best signal in anime that you found i really i really cannot say uh, um i i don't think any of them really touch like anything super profound but if your eyes are profound if you are god realized then you will see profundity yeah in anything. okay cool Everything yeah will touch you and, and yes will be profound basically yeah I, I told you before we started the show that i feel like it will be a good idea to potentially see as we sort of get into some of the financial stabilization and growth on on your end if we can potentially explore maybe even having your unit in Los Angeles and potentially producing together the animated series that we've both been totally cool. Yeah. It's great. Chimps is awesome, but it was even cooler when, before I even mentioned it to you, you told me that you also had the vision for it. And yeah, it's, it's, it could be amazing it could, <laughs> because, because it's fun. It's light. It's just animation. And at the same time, it's it will it will actually make you like, ho holy fuck! This, this is this this relates to the actual reality. You can actually become God realized or become uh, pulled or thirsty for it through the animation. Exactly. So it's so 
totally amazing and it can be like um uh, just just if we if we go into it, it it can just expand in amazing wonderful ways yeah chimps making people thirsty for god realization yeah and yep. that's just the the, the first sentence that's, yeah it's, it's the first sentence. Sentence. yeah 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 exactly so so you do feel like what we're building right now with the metaverse technologies like here with the going through various mmo rpgs you feel like this is that um this is what exactly that in the next couple of decades we will have built out the technology that like enable that online yeah yeah to go in yeah. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. It definitely is possible. There is no doubt. Yeah, yeah it I, shouldn't be uh, too hard in in my perception. Yep, and I and I feel like that's what the Godhead is, and then it goes into the tail again, and then it goes to the Godhead, and then there's the tail again. Not the same reality. We're not going to come back to this one. We've already explored this one or experienced it, but there's going to be many is an infinite well that's what infinity is you can ne- you can never finish infinity yeah it it's- already probably already went through infinite cycles we are probably experiencing this dream very specific very unique dream for the infinite time already because well it's infinity even if there are infinite amount of dreams it they all it already went through the infinite infinite amount of times <laughs> I like in the the map analogy is a really good one because the map is in video games it's bounded what, 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 what is the map analogy I'm, it's I'm, bounded the map in the corner of the screen in the game like right here yes. it's it's a bounded map Okay. But infinity is unbounded. There's no bounds. And so you can never finish exploring basically. Exploring there's there's no end to Leela, the divine play. There's no end to the divine play. And when I got that <sighs> that's just that's it. That's what happened. But at the same time, that's why we continue doing this. That's what Sahaja Samadhi or the middle path or middle way is, is is when there's the weaving of the realizations into the daily activities. Because there's also the lazy fish, as Fred Davis talked about on the show because you're the fish in the ocean you are the ocean but you can think about like you're a fish in ocean i mean there's like lazy fish that happens and it's kind of funny because yeah sometimes people can get really will you expand on this yeah it's kind of like people can become very fuck off in a cave and people can also become trapped in Maya and that's what the middle way is you don't get trapped in the worldly sensory pleasures and you don't get trapped in the cave I don't think if you are God realized and you go to a cave you are really trapped it's it's literally God's will in that case. And it's also God's will in the case of Maya. It's also God's will. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. And the, and the middle way is to God realize and to weave into the the tantric path, the the social fabric. Yeah. It's all. Yeah. So that's why when you look out and you see people that are chasing Lamborghinis and houses and yachts and private jets, you know, just today I was just seeing again, another one of these, like become a millionaire in, one year and i'm like my goodness it's just yeah so that's god's will 
that's it as well. So, yep. Because the parable of the prodigal son happens where somebody goes and they're like, that's what I want. That's what will make me happy. One million externally seeking. And then they hit a breaking point and then they turn inwards to consciousness or awareness. Yeah. So cool. And then maybe another good topic is that what have you what have you found so far about this if you have found anything you and i just talked about a little bit ago which is that is the reason why you and i have so many of the same teachers is the reason that they are the ones that are playing the best tennis closest to the ineffable and that's why we're gravitated towards them i would say they're just very simple very clear very direct that is why we are gravitated towards that beautiful we don't want to waste any time we just want the god realization and beyond we don't want to uh, just basically waste waste time on um <laughs> like other stuff because I definitely have no interest in them that's why even Eckhart Tolle I'm not really watching him as much anymore because he more relates to the uh, very unconscious people yeah. and them at that stage but Muji and Rupert Spira and uh, Shunyamurti they uh, they yep. uh, speak in a, in a higher level we can say of yep. course, there's no doubt that Eckhart Tolle is uh, extremely uh, God realized. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a great way to put it. Is to speaking to those that are most intoxicated by Maya, whereas maybe Shunyamurti and Rupert Spira Muji are more for those that are already in the the physicalism oneness let's say something like that yeah. they're they're on the final stages of of actually realizing basically exactly yeah, that's of course idea. not all of them because you see many people on muji that they're not even serious about it they're, they're not no. they're not really uh, going to god realize anytime soon probably that yeah, but it, it happens like you, I remember one time there was this one person who says, I really want it, I really want it, but he was not willing to actually see and abide. And uh, But uh, even though he was asking questions and asking questions, if I was Muji, I would just, okay, listen, you are not going to get it right now. Uh, sit down, maybe some other time it will work because the, the, it was clearly uh, seen that th there's no way this guy is going to actually, because we are at the last stage, okay, listen, there's an awareness that is ever present. Isn't it so? And he's just saying, uh, no, no, but I don't know. So you're not serious. There's no way. So I would just tell him, sit down, let someone else speak that actually can get it. But at the same time, he was, they were talking and they were talking. And another person stood up and said, while you were talking to him, I got it. I got it. You cannot see it. It's, it's what's seeing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. It is what is seeing. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. That's what St. Francis of Assisi said that you are seeking what is seeing. Yeah. Yeah. You are looking for what is looking. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Amen. And yeah, I like our little breakdown. It's a, uh, it's, it's a good, way to view it is sort of the different levels those that are most trapped in ego might gravitate more towards an Eckhart Tolle and those that are a little bit more in like the transpersonal states or the oneness states they might uh, gravitate more towards Shunyamurti or Rupert Spira Muji etc stuff like that that's cool yeah. the similar one to Eckhart Tolle would probably be Adya Shanti as well Adya Shanti is another good one for Eckhart yeah interesting Interesting. Do you have other ones that come to mind that you think fill the level of either like the Eckerts or the Ruperts, stuff like that, and in, into those categories? 
the the well Eckhart, like Eckhart would be uh, I would say Ganga Ji uh, doesn't really um, um, point to the absolute to the infinity. It would probably be also for the people still um, uh, very much identified to at least open up at least a bit. It's not even saying like awareness, right? Um, so I would probably put Gangaji in that category, although she probably has uh, books also in, in a higher level. All of them probably have uh, books on all levels, right? Um, oh, yeah. Similar to Eckhart Tolle would actually be Osho too, but at the it's same time, interesting. also at the same time, he- He's gone higher levels, yeah. 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 Um, Ramana Maharshi, of course, uh, very high. Would you put Ramana in closer to like Rupert's or closer to like Bentinho's? Oh, Bentinho is very high, of course, very direct. Uh, Ramana would be uh, very, very, very simple, very direct. Also, I would put it like Rupert Spire, basically. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. If you have any more names, and I can like probably Nisargata is probably up. In... Also, the same as Rupert Spire, basically. Yeah. And Muji, very, yeah. very similar to how Muji is. Um, Agreed. Yeah. Articulating, like it's not you who is suffering; it's the person you think you are. That's super clear. Yeah. Yeah. So what about, do you know of other people that are closer to the level of even pulling the last thorn, like Bentinho says, around awareness and then recognizing that as the absolute? Do you know others that are in the yes, Bentinho? That would be, that would be uh, Muji. Muji. Yes. De, okay. Um, Bentinho, of course. There are probably the the like there there are the ones coming up right now. I'm not sure of anyone else. Like I don't remember anyone else. Have you studied the Neo Advaita teachers? Oh, People... like Jim Newman. I was actually watching. Yeah. He's considered Neo Advaita, right? Yeah. And he so, learned from Tony Parsons. Yep. So I was actually watching it yesterday. And when they say this is it, they refer to consciousness, basically. But they don't say consciousness. They say this. Well, this is consciousness. Well, in, in how uh, we are referring to consciousness. So yeah, like what they're saying is basically there is no me. The me is illusory, illusory, which is the personal identity. So I completely agree with that. But if you take it out of context, it can be very stupid, very silly. That's that's why Bentinho talked about it. Like it's unstable. Like Neo Advaita is unstable in a certain sense because it's it's trying to get people direct to, in a sense, the absolute rather than taking the first step to the awareness. And then the How second- Taking you to the absolute though. It's actually taking you to uh, the awareness because when you say this is it- how much, how much Jim Newman and Tony Parsons and Fred Davis, how much of the Neo Advaita have you watched? Actually, I watched only like one video of Jim Newman. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I'll, I'll break it down a little bit more for you. Um, okay. the, 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 the way that it's generally portrayed is something along the lines of this is a dream, this is an illusion. There is nobody here. There is nobody here doing anything. And that's very much like the absolute. There's no one here doing anything. And they definitely 
touch a how little. I, how I how I would interpret? There's no one here doing anything. It means there's no personal identity doing anything. In that case, it's just the awareness level. It's not sure, that. Sure. Sure. I think they're declining even the awareness. That's what I'm trying to say. But um, from but, what I perceive, uh, that's just not how I'm seeing it. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe after taking uh, statements, then I can also see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Again, point how actually it is referring only to the me, to the personal identity. It's not saying anything about consciousness. If someone asked, "Is there consciousness?" No. There's only this. They would say. But that's just because consciousness is a concept and you think you know consciousness, but actually uh, actual consciousness is beyond knowing in a way, in, beyond conceptual knowing, which is what they refer to as unknowing. Unknowing is actually just pure knowing in how I would say stuff is. And then they would say that there's no, there's no knowing happening. There's no... There's no conceptual know, know, knowing happening. And something like there's no observer, right? So there's no awareness, there's no consciousness, there's nothing there's no like that. Observer in the personal sense, like I'm observing as a personal identity, I'm observing. No, but there isn't observing an observation. So, so let's put let's put it into three levels. There's the physicalism, where it's the contracted ego, and then the leap happens up to the observer or God realization or witness and stuff like that. And then there's the next leap up, which is removing the thorn of even the observer or the awareness that then brings you to the absolute, the no attributes, no agent, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So ineffable. And so what I'm saying Neo Advaita does is they go directly from the physical and then they say that there's simply what's happening in this appearance, just that. And that's all there. And then that's what, in a sense, they're trying to get people to leap up to that recognition of just simply the appearance, this. And so what I'm, when rather than that one step, and that's why it even sometimes looks like it's, it's just, it's, it's very unstable in many ways. But yeah, the, this sort of idea of a two-step God realization and then removing even that thorn, that's a much more uh, stable step. But I, I appreciate the hits back. And I, I would probably also need to um, figure out a little bit more with sort of the instability of the neo-advaita teaching in a sense it's like the egoic consciousness gets to just say ah it's all a dream okay i will go back to thinking i'm a separate entity in a dream you know or so there's a point in that so uh so in my in my perception it appears that actually this is it when they say this is it it's just pointing to god realization it's not pointing to uh, okay that. yeah fair okay got it got it got it Okay, so that's cool. So then that would be potentially maybe like Tony here, something like that. And then Yeah, I love those three sort of tiers that we talked about. Those are really strong. It's a really good way to sort of visualize it. It's kind of like mass media spirituality. And then like those that are really trying to God realize, and then those that are trying to recognize <laughs> that the absolute or ineffable. Yeah. 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 That's cool. So probably the last question is what has it been like now with the one-on-one -on -one private sessions in terms of how are you, you just fielding people like via, the DM you um, and they're like, I would love to sign up or they sign up on your website. And then what, what is the process? A, a, a specific link yep. uh, to just um, order a session in a specific hour. Yep. So it's very automatic and I get an email and I just, uh, we just have the, the session. We probably communicate in DMs also. And then what is, so walk us through what, what it looks like. Do they have to fill out any information? Like, for example, for me, the way that I handle the, you know, we call this mirroring, right? In the tennis is like, excuse me, that the, 
in a sense, the more purified the God realized mirror is, the more they can vortex up and help the other mirror purify, clean up. And so usually what I do when I undergo this process is I ask questions to understand where they're at in God realization. And so, do, how, yeah, how do you, yeah, walk us through your process. It would be very uh, spontaneous. So I cannot really say what exactly mm. is my process. Mm -hmm. I come very unprepared. I see what the person has to say. And from there we go and uh, realize God together. And there's no doubt that you are able to realize God like there's no there's nothing blocking you and if you say but something is blocking me but I tell you okay what is aware of that because the awareness is the awareness blocked no it's not blocked so that's it that is God realization so I just uh, gave you a spoiler <laughs> that's beautiful yeah there's nothing blocking you what is blocking you there's nothing what is blocking you. the awareness from being it's already here it's already ever present the awareness is already aware there's no there's no blockage that, that's just a thought that you believe but there's an awareness of it that is the key the awareness is the key not whatever you think is the key yeah yeah what is blocking the awareness from being here there's nothing blocking the awareness from being here. Just recognize the diamond necklace that's already around your neck. Awareness is the key. And yet it's so hilarious how it's actually the, the most funny thing is how difficult it is to recognize the the diamond already around our neck. It's so difficult that at first I thought, okay, this is so simple. That everybody <laughs> will get it. Everybody will get it. But at some point I realized this is not working. This is not working as efficiently as I thought, as I it, thought it would. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you, you yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You, you, go, you go. That's when I decided that, okay, listen, follow my Patreon, use these entheogens that they will force you to disable the ego so you can recognize what is real. And from there, it will be much smoother. It will be um, like something gets deleted yep. whenever you use the psychedelics, there's no doubt. So as you repeatedly, like the same, like as if, as if you are abiding and do these yoga meditations on Rupert Spire's um, YouTube channel, you follow that and it dissolves more and more and more. But at least get to the point where you realize what the hell I'm talking about very clearly. From there, you will you yourself will have this absolute um, clarity and thirst on what you are actually looking for. And from there, it's much easier to to just tell you, listen, there's an awareness. Oh, oh okay, there's an awareness. Okay, that's it. Just don't identify with anything. But most people cannot even like understand like. That the the mind is so virile for them that they are just not able to. I know. Oh. I know. <laughs> it's weird. It is. It's it's so interesting that we're wrapping up on this exact point that the realization of the diamond necklace is so profound and it's so beautiful, piercing the veilless veil, and then it's like fuck. It's that simple. And then you go and you take the gold over to other people and you're, you're like the diamonds there. Like that's the gold, the diamonds right here. It's right here. This is what it is. And then you're, you're, and then you watch as like all these ranges of responses from like, I'm trapped in physicalism. I don't know what you're talking about all the way up to things like, like they'll like make jokes about it, but they won't get it. That, that's so weird when yeah. that like they'll make jokes they'll be like ha ha yeah yeah all oneness yeah ha ha yeah the consciousness is there they'll be ha. like they'll be like also like fuck lol ha, 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 but they don't get it yeah yep. and but there are those and it is so so auspicious when you actually point to someone listen the the, the, the awareness is here isn't it so who is struggling who is looking for what and he says no one 
he actually understands he actually realizes at that in, in an instant with yeah. no back and forth nothing just realize the awareness is ever present and that's it you are the awareness now and that's so profound that's so beautiful i mean and, and then they comment thank you thank you you changed my life you made me realize i have no problems i don't exist and that's and so so simply and like some other people that just just cannot get it but that is exactly why I have this guidance on the Patreon that um, allows you to, no matter what kind of delusion loop you are in, yep. you are able to just disconnect from that completely and realize what I'm speaking about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I love that. Through every Maya delusion loop that... And that's ultimately the nature of what this is, is all of these different Maya delusion loops across all of these creation designs. And then just that GPS callback, as Bentinho says, of union, yoga, hypnosis, mystic, where you got realized. Another person who is like a cartoli, by the way, a Sadhguru. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, another. Yeah, 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 that's another good one for the masses. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Yep. That is another good one for the masses. Yeah. And that it's as simple as the recognition that awareness is ever present and that awareness is already here. There's nothing blocking that. And then the thing about that is to be careful because even when somebody breaks through and gets it, we were talking about this with Fred, is that people can break through and get it. And then it's great. But then the if they don't in a sense undergo a process of recognizing that the light bulb as adi shanti says you want to stay on rather than just the flicker um it, it still requires you to not in a sense go back out into maya seeking the intoxicating pleasures and so there's in a sense the abiding is something that not everybody recognizes right away and that they can go they can get a taste of it and then go off for 10 years distracted and then be like what the f like yeah type thing i had this moment with my mother actually i pointed to her uh, to the awareness and we and she was oh she she got it for a moment <laughs> She was like, oh my God, are you abiding in this bliss all the time? And I'm like, yeah, that, that's, that's like normal. And, and she, just after like five seconds, she starts asking trivial questions again. Like, yeah. why are you doing this? Like, yeah. and it, it, yeah. it, it, like it, it is nonsense. Like exactly. I'm telling her every day, listen, these things come and go. They don't matter. Yeah. Literally they don't matter. Just abide as the awareness, but no, it's just not working. It's like, they, they don't realize how significant uh, this awareness is. Yeah. Yeah. And we got to be careful to not make it a personality teaching is another thing that Fred pointed out to us that I thought was like, uh, like there's, um, there's some people that talk about how like, some people will try to put a descriptor onto the ineffable and they'll say that, Oh, the ineffable is anarchic or it's creative or it's a divine play. It's Leela and whatnot. And we have to be careful because any of those can become personality teachings in the sense of when we do things like saying like, come to my $1,000 retreat and I will tell you ultimate truth you know, that type of thing. So then there's a very, there's a very delicate sort of transmission that needs to happen that is very strategic and surgical and precise. And that is not in service to Maya, but is rather in service to the ultimate. And also, so you, yeah, yes, yeah. Basically what you're saying is not just make someone intellectually understand what you are speaking about and then they just use the intellectual understanding and they say as if they have actually realized experientially what you're speaking about is that what you're referring to 
so maybe maybe more so that two things first of all that we color the absolute in the sense of like we, the absolute's ineffable and then we color it with these descriptors but it's attributeless and yet we color it so we bring i, I just did not uh, see anyone who actually did that Oh, okay. Okay. Fair. Yeah, I've seen a decent amount of, in a sense, people that are coloring the ultimate and then charging lots of money for it type thing. And so there's a there's a balance to strike between using money as a fuel for sharing as close as we can in as humble of a way as we can while and the sort of opposite side of that is to sort of charge ridiculous amounts of money and also say that my truth is the one truth and nobody else has it until they get it the way that I have it and so it's like that's also really important to sort of just recognize you you don't there's no like we take our our unit is the diamond or the jewel and the jewel or the diamond, it refracts the source light in its own expression. And so when this unit's expression and when your unit's expression, each one of everybody listening's expression tries to play tennis around the ineffable, they're doing it with their own unit's coloration. Did that make sense? Like, uh, I just, again, I, I cannot really relate to that too much because I don't see anyone coloring the absolute. If okay. anything, someone would color the God realization, but the absolute, like... Okay, fair, yeah. Anybody even talking about the absolute, really. So... Yeah, fair. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so spot on. There's nothing blocking the awareness that is already here, Alre always, already, ever present and free awareness. <sighs> Thanks for coming on the show, Sebastian. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love learning about your story. So profound. So crucial that you found entheogens to help you break through. Definitely. That is why it is totally my recommendation to utilize these things because I do see too many people who are um, just intellectually understanding uh, uh, awareness, basically. But it's like you, you see them and they are they're still identified with the mind. It's, and they, they don't realize it. So that is why my pointing is, my highest pointing would be to follow the, the guidance on the Patreon and realize experientially utilizing the uh, entheogens because there is no doubt there. There is no intellect there. There is no way for an intellectual understanding. It yeah. just disables the egoic mind and you are able to actually understand and, and it gives you a huge powerful boost of 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 source basically and uh, definitely it is uh, absolutely uh, crucial even you can realize god without entheogens but i i just cannot i cannot say i recommend it literally <laughs> i just i just cannot yeah i've done so many on the entheogenic buffet and they've helped so much. I like how you say they disable the ego. That's why the literature scientifically is clear about the quieting of the default mode network and the enabling of so many new novel connections to happen in the connectome of the neural wiring diagram inside of the human brain. And that's what enables you to recognize the trees being alive because you've never recognized that before because you've walked around with a little tree icon in your head. And then when you undergo some entheogens, you recognize, 
holy shit look at the sunlight shining through every single one of the leaves and look at the pattern that it's making on the ground and look at the chipmunk that just ran through and the squirrel and the birds and look at the i was one one time in switzerland i was just sitting near the huge huge lake uh, kind of looked like an ocean and i was looking at the sky and it was a clear day there was the sun and and you just see how this is literal infinity literally you, you understand that this is timeless and you just see how i cannot describe what you are seeing but it's like you are just perceiving everything in such a different light that uh, super profound just just the perception itself is so profound and then you you remember how it looks and you are able to connect to that while sober too exactly. so the way you are realizing the profound truths on psychedelics on entheogens you are able to connect to that uh, kind of a vibration within yourself and able to perceive and realize these things on the on the instant to instant you don't have to to only be tripping and then it it works it you literally it 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 it's it burns itself into the consciousness and then we rebaseline to that when we're sober as our natural state bliss peace infinity eternity we see the divine everywhere everywhere we look we see god's face it's a sufi aphorism it's yeah. like the entheogens would be like Rupert Spira has these yoga meditations, right? The entheogens are just the same thing, but like 10,000 times more powerful. Well, they disable that egoic default mode network yeah. style. Yeah, because otherwise you can't, it's so much more difficult to disable. Yeah, exactly. Spot on. I'm, I'm super agree that that's a massive gateway. We have to be more serious on, as a planet about the gateway of entheogens. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, I, yeah, so many things that we kind of crushed in conversation there. The eternal fireworks as well. There are so many good things. Sebastian, thank you for coming on the show. We love you. Thank you. We're so grateful. Thank you. So cool. So cool that this relationship now is here. It's divine. It's so divine. Everything is divine. A relationship with anyone is divine, but this is like a extremely divine. So divine. It's just, it's, it's indescribable. Yes, it is. I love that. The Pathless Path to God Realization, an awesome episode with Sebastian Key. Again, you can find his uh, links in the bio below to his Instagram. Go and give him a follow. He has great content there. Also, his website and his blog. His blog is great content. Go and check that out. You can book a one-on-one -on -one session with him as well over there and support him on Patreon. Remember, our boy is in the process of stabilizing his own absolute and God realization and therefore financially also would love to be able to grow that and prosper so support him there as well and thank you very much for tuning in everyone we love you we're grateful we'd love to hear you. We love you love you love you yes yes we would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below let us know how you feel about the episode and what we discussed like the video if it brought you value subscribe if you haven't share it with other people that you feel like would it would bring value to and that is all the pathless path to God realization, we all in our own unique style recognize the diamond necklace that's already around our necks. Thank you. Much love. Peace. <laughs>